Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today's video is going to be talking a little bit about the Olight branded O-Knives. Alright, or O-Knife. Alright, what I have here is the Splint. I just got this as a wonderful uh, Christmas slash birthday gift uh, from a viewer. Fantastic knife. If you haven't seen these uh, O-Knives before, all right, they're pretty nice uh, setup. If you ever, you know, had an, an actual Olight, they'll say it's a very similar package. Where you get this nice accessory pack, you get a really nice sheath. You know, I have to say, it's uh, it's one of those things where packaging doesn't really matter to a lot of people, but for some, it does. It does actually matter. You want to get all these little extras. Now, some people, of course, talk about how that is added into the price, but all of these uh, O knives are very affordable. They're, I believe, they're all under a hundred bucks. Uh, maybe there's one or two limited edition titanium versions that might be over that, but on sale I think they're all at least uh, under 100 bucks. But if you haven't seen these before, there's a separate little pocket in here. They come with these challenge coins, and these challenge coins are actually really, really neat. So they're specific to each individual knife. This one being the splint, you can see the actual knife design. This one happens to have a cool little camping scene. We got a little uh, you know, tent in the background with some trees, and then there's your chopping log. And the splint just jammed right into it, which uh, if that blade was that far <laughs> into the chopping log, I don't know if you'd uh, get your tip back. But anyway, here's a knife. Super cool. This is actually uh, one of my favorites is the splint. Just a fantastic design. Uh, has a uh, thumb, a regular, you know, flipper on the back. Okay, use your pointer finger like we're all kind of used to, but also has this front flipper design. So you can use your thumb, you know, sideways and open that another way. Or, of course, you can use the opening slot on the side to open it, but just smooth action. Really, really nice knife. Um, even though this is probably one of my favorite designs, it's a very aggressive looking blade. I do love this clip point blade. It's just super cool. I like the kind of cutout here. It just has a lot going for it, uh, especially for its, you know, very affordable price tag. Deep concealed pocket clip on here as well. All right, smooth G10 handles. Beautiful color. We got the blue. And of course, Olight, if you're not familiar, you know, the blue is kind of their thing. It's kind of their brand color, so a lot of times they're incorporating blue in different products. But it's just a really, really nice knife. But besides the uh, the splint, I've probably used at this point maybe 10 or 12 different um, uh, o, o knives. I, I keep want to say it like Olight knife, but no, it's it's O knife. I guess it's its own branding, really. Um, I think I've had every single model except for two. And the two I haven't had, I believe, were like special editions of ones that I have had. I don't remember all the names. Um, one that I kept originally when it first came out was this Beagle. All right, so let me actually leave these guys out so you can see them as we go. But I just want to talk about it a little bit. I actually got a message from someone asking about the uh, the O knives. Like, hey Jeff, you know, is it is it a decent quality knife? You know, what do you think? I see there's a bunch of models there. This had this particular person happened to. Um, you know, be a fan of their flashlights, all right? Now, Olight, the flashlight company, they don't make these knives. I wanna say it's made by Kaiser. I've talked about this before. You guys can confirm that, uh, or if it's not, you can correct me if I'm wrong there. I'm just going by memory, but I believe Kaiser makes these for uh, Olight. And the quality is very, very nice. This is the most uh, recent one that I got, the metal. All right, this is very impressive. This one I EDC for a little while. And I have to say, I kind of regret not having some other models that I've had. Like when I first got them, I really liked them, but I like a lot of knives. And what ends up happening is over time, um, I have to trade things. You know, I can't afford to just keep everything, you know, that I'm constantly testing. I have to get rid of something old in order to get something new. Uh, but I do regret, at least with the O knife line, not keeping all of them. Because not only am I a sucker for these, these challenge coins, this one's still in the pack, but you can see it through there. Um, not only am I a sucker for these things, I think these would be very, very cool in like a display case. They have those really beautiful wood um, challenge coin display cases. So here's a shot of this metal. Definitely cool, we got the orange and blue together. All right, black clip on this one. The big deal with this guy is this one's a button lock. All right, so we have a flipper on the back, flip it open. Flip open, I mean, the action on this is pretty insane. Uh, very cool, simple blade. This one is in 154 cm. All right, very nice blade steel as well. Super lean grind on this guy. Definitely slices like uh, like crazy. I mean, it's just a really really good slicer. Um, button lock is super simple. You push the button and it, it drops. All right, you can time it right. You can have it drop right right into the uh, handle there. 
So button locks are super fun to play with, all right, because everything's everything's all right here. You know, you use your flipper, you push down, but your thumb is already right next to that lock, so you push the lock to press it, give it a little oof over. I don't know what an oof is, but I guess that's an oof. Um, a little bit of a, a flick there. I mean, it's just super fidget friendly, um, but it's a very usable knife. It locks up perfectly. There is no play at all. Sometimes button locks are hard to, um, you know, to produce a good quality one. I've had tons and tons of button locks. On higher, um, you know, higher end companies, they do it really right. Basically, it's a plunger. I think I've shown this before, but it's a very simple concept as far as how this lock works. It's, everything's black in here, so it might be hard to see. But there's a little cutout there, so when you push the button down, all right, it allows that blade to freely move. All right. Once you let go of it, you'll see, and there's a spring on the bottom part that's always pushing upwards, but once this is open, it pushes up and it prevents it from moving. All right, so that's how the... The button lock works and of course you have a uh, button lock automatics a lot of people are familiar with those where you push the button and it shoots out it's the same exact mechanism only has a spring that's wound up so when you push the button you know it springs all the way open and, and locked all right and then when you close it you have to push against that spring but anyway um yeah the metal one of their uh newest models super cool i do really like i like the uh the kind of the cutouts here it's just a little bit different it's hard to create something new for me, I'm seeing a feather in here. I don't know if you guys see the same thing I see, but it's just kind of like a feather design. All right, it's on both sides. Um, the pocket clip, by the way, is swappable. All right, to left side carry if you wanted to, which is very nice. All right, I think that's kind of a must these days. Right side, left side carry, because you never know who your, your customer is going to be. If they're lefty, they shouldn't have to conform, you know, to what us righties are doing. They should be able to have uh, the option to swap that clip. Lanyard hole on there, all right? I haven't seen a, a lanyard on a knife in a while. Um, but, uh, but it's always going to have the option. And there you go. There's the, uh, the metal. So the new one's awesome. A, uh, a classic that I really, really liked a lot that I got rid of and got one back. I will keep this forever. I really, really like the splint. Again, just super cool knife. Um, maybe it was meant to be, you know what I mean? The person who sent it didn't know if I had one. I did have one, but I got rid of it in a trade. And, um, you know, it's awesome to have one back. I will not get rid of this anymore. And then the Beagle, like I said, is a classic one as well. This one was super affordable. All right, this one, I want to say this was maybe like number two or three that came out, maybe three, something like that. It was one of the older versions. Um, but also, just a fantastic knife. All right, same deal, we've got that challenge coin in there. Pop this guy out. All right, very simple design. This one does not have a flipper on there. Some people don't like flippers, believe it or not, even though it's on pretty much every new knife. <laughs> this one just has that uh, ambidextrous dual thumb studs, all right, which by the way, and I always said this, I said this in a lot of older videos too, is I always preferred a thumb stud. When flippers first hit the market, it was awesome. It's kind of like when assisted knives first hit the market, just a super cool idea, and then everyone made one. You know what I mean? Every company made them. There was just so many options. But, you know, for years and years and years, I did not, the flipper was not a thing. When I got into knives, there was no such thing as a flipper. It wasn't invented yet. Um, so the standard thumb stud and me just flicking it out with my thumb, that was what it was for many, many years. But anyway, the Beagle, very, very cool. Also in 150, excuse me, 154 CM. I'm, I'm thinking faster than my mouth can move. <laughs> um, just a fantastic knife. Very, very simple, pretty slender, nice uh, harpoon style blade, I'll call that where that, that swedge is, is kind of, you know, there's the metal's pushed up and then cut into a swedge. I don't know, hard to explain, but that's the uh, the description. Come on, camera, doesn't want to focus. Let's do this. Let's give you one of those. There you go, it's a little better. Um, but yeah, so the fact that this pushes outward before, you know, becomes the swedge, that's what I would consider like a harpoon style blade. Um, I believe, I want to say, back in the day, um, I was working with, uh, with Boker when the Kalishnikov, uh, was really popular when it first hit the market. Like this is way, way before, um, like the donut knife and all that kind of stuff. The dessert, or excuse me, the, yeah, dessert warrior is what it was called. Um, the AK-74 auto was, uh, super popular, but anyway, long story short, I was working with Boker. They, they contacted me and said they wanted to make a version of that knife for, um, for you guys, my, my viewer base. It, it happened to fall through. The person I was working with on that project uh, switched jobs, <laughs> so I got a big apology. It never worked out, uh, but it was, it was my own design on that knife, and it had a harpoon-style blade. 
that was one of the options they actually gave me. They, they said, look, we want to do something different. This is before they came out with the Karambit one, before they came out with the miniature version. I mean, this was, this was years and years ago. Um, but yeah, they, they showed this style of blade, very similar to this, and they called it harpoon. That was the first time I heard that term, and it stuck. So now when I see knives like this, I always think of harpoon. But anyway, fantastic knife, the Beagle. Also just super affordable. Really, really classy looking to me. The, the all blacked out thing with the blue accents, so the blue uh, dual thumb studs, the blue hardware. Just really, really nice touch. All right, It would have been cool too if they had blue standoffs, they had black standoffs here, but... But yeah, just fantastic knife. I want to say this is in the $50 to $60 range, especially when you get, you know, the, the Olight sales that are constantly popping up. Now, although the entire line of O knives, to me, are, can, you know, budget knives. Now, some people might say, well, you know, a $100 knife or an $80 knife or even a $70 knife is not really a budget knife. A lot of people use that term when you're talking about like $20 or $30 knives. Uh, but, you know, I, I talk to people all over the world every day about all kinds of different knives. Some people have money, some people don't. Um, when people are consistently buying $300 knives, yeah, a budget knife is $100. Uh, but for many people, budget really just means like maybe $10 or $15 or $20 or something like that. But anyway, long story short, uh, of this entire line, the Beagle is one of the cheaper ones, I think very underrated. Just super, super nice. Now, I want to say that there's, there's a D2 version as well. Uh, this is the 154 version. Um, but you know, I'm a little fuzzy on all the you know details and prices and all the other models and stuff like that. But I, I want to kind of make this video just talking about how the entire line is just very impressive. I really have been impressed by Olight in working with what I believe is Kaiser uh, on getting these knives produced. I, I just think they're fantastic and they're definitely worth the money that they're uh, they're charging, especially if you happen to pick one up during one of the Olight sales. Now this one was uh, a surprise to me, a huge surprise. This is their first fixed blade, at least as far as I know. This is the uh, the O Knife Fortitude, and this one was extremely impressive. Now I never seen this on the regular, you know, official O Light store. I think it's OlightStore.com, maybe is their website where they you know have all the sales all the time. Um, and I seen O Lights obviously for sale on a lot of different dealer sites as well. But there's a site called O Buy. I forget what it is, like us.obuy.com, something like that. And I believe it's a newer site. They have a couple different Olay products on there. They actually have some kitchen knives as well, which they might be expanding to, which look pretty interesting. Maybe I'll try those out in the future. Um, but uh, they have the Fortitude on there. And the Fortitude is like 90 bucks. They have a deal where it comes with a, a pretty cool looking little pry bar as well. But a sub $100 fixed blade, uh, this thing is super impressive. I mean, it, it's so incredibly comfortable. This one is in uh, D2. Um, I love the blade design. Just overall, it's a very simple fixed blade. I say a medium sized fixed blade, but boy, is this thing comfortable. There is jimping on the back here. It kind of rides barely above those uh, scales. Beautiful, what they're calling OD green, which is, uh, you know, it's hard. OD green is, I mean, you could take 10 knives that say OD green and they're all slightly different greens. This one I feel is like just a touch darker. It's a beautiful color. I do like the little cuts in here. It kind of breaks up that pattern on the G10. All right, there's a little uh, cutout as well for a lanyard on this one, which I actually might put on this knife just because I think it'll look nice. Some, uh, some black and uh, green uh, paracord. It's just like, I don't know why this thing is so comfortable. It's so ridiculously comfortable. I didn't get to use it real hard yet. I was only cutting some uh, cardboard boxes and stuff, but man, it slices fantastic and it's just super comfy in the hand. I can't, I can't express enough how comfortable it is. And it's just, it, it's manufactured just really, really nicely. I'm not 100% sure if Kaiser's doing their, their fixed blade as well, uh, but kudos to them. I mean, my, my hat's off. It's super nice for under 100 bucks. I've had a lot of fixed blades, you know, in all different price ranges. Sometimes you get surprised. Sometimes the $45 fixed blade is just awesome. Sometimes, you know, the opposite happens where the $350 fixed blade sucks. Or it doesn't suck, but it's just like, why is this $350? It should be like maybe a hundred bucks. Um, but this one was just impressive. This was super impressive to me. So I definitely want to share with you guys, but I want to make this video, not only just talk about the entire line to say that I've loved it. Cause I've had messages, hey, are they good? Yes, they're definitely good. Olight is not making them, <laughs> but they're making sure that these come out awesome. All right, they're slapping a logo on some other knives and, and that's okay with me. I don't really care what the logo says. Uh, the knives are top-notch for the price and you know of course you get in on those uh, different uh you know sale days and stuff you get even better prices on them but uh more specifically i want to talk about this fortitude it was just super impressive but 
I want to let you guys know you're not going to find this, at least as of now, I haven't seen it on the official Olay page. So Google that, Google the website, Google the knife, and see where you can find it, because um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. So it's been a while since I actually, uh, you know, carried and used a fixed blade. Like, I use them around the house occasionally, still do testing all the time on fixed blades. I actually just ordered some stuff from Walmart, some fixed blades, which I'm going to be doing some testing. Now that it's winter, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot more downtime. And uh, I think that uh, it's a fantastic time to get outside and, you know, do some woodwork and things like that, especially in the cold. It really tests your, your abilities. But anyway, just wanted to uh, touch upon these for all the people sending messages asking about them. They get a thumbs up for me. I like them across the board, specifically. I mean, I do really like this, um, the button lock uh, on this metal, but the splint, all versions of it, I think that's a home run. I think the, the Beagle is underrated. I don't, I don't see a whole lot of people talking about it as much as some of the other models. And then again, most recently, this Fortitude is just, just very impressive. I posted a couple of pictures on uh, Instagram, but the second I got it in my hand, I mean, it's just in this, uh, this natural grip here, it feels so, so good, all right? I don't know. It's just it's just rounded enough, you know what I'm saying? And it's it's quite hefty too. It's a it's a thick stock. I don't know the dimensions offhand, but I feel like this knife can definitely take uh, some abuse if you are someone who likes to uh, beat up on their knives. So anyway, that is it for now. If you guys have ever gotten a, an O light O knife, let me know down in the comment section what model is it. What do you think of it? You know, do you EDC them? Um, I put all these into rotation before. And I like them all, you know, I mean, there's nothing, there's no drawbacks specifically. Now, if you're talking about each individual knife, there's always going to be things I like and things I don't like. Uh, but just overall, it's been very positive. My experience with Olight's line of knives have been good. So just wanted to uh, mention that for all that were curious. So that's all. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.